All right, welcome everybody. I'm back out here in my garage again. Um, going to do, uh, I guess, another Q and A, and I believe uh, next Saturday is the last Saturday of the month. And I said before, I'm, you know, people seem to enjoy the uh, show and tell type stuff, so I'll probably, uh, you know, do do another show and tell thing. Uh, for May, so y'all send me pictures and descriptions and stuff of your CNC projects, and that means a lot of things. It could be CNC laser, could be CNC router, could be a 3D printer. You just never know. But uh, but yeah, send me uh, send me your photos. Of, you know something cool you made here recently, and we'll uh, we'll do another show and tell. Uh, Javi, you want to go ahead and uh, pop in here and tell everybody who you are and where they can find you, and then we'll go through a, a roll call. Sure, sure, sure thing, Dave. Uh, oh, my name's uh, Javi from Javi's Woodshop, and uh, you can find well, you can find me on YouTube, Javi's Woodshop, and uh, a show directly uh, following Dave's uh, Learn CNC with Javi. And on tonight's show, I'll be making. Uh, little trays little candy trays dishes uh tv trays things like that uh from any object so i'll be importing some type of shape and uh very very simple stuff today but uh uh somewhat you can get very creative with it and make some money uh thank you dave yeah simple is good simple is always good uh i'm a big fan of simple uh, all right, let's let's do a little roll call here. We got Ryan Ballard, Wayne Hurl, Lynn Cabrera, Raymond Dixon, David Budd, the Wood Bucket, and uh, I can't even remember who that is now. He just okay. won. Who is that? I should. Uh, he he won a giveaway the other night. Uh, yeah, I, I can't. I can't remember all these uh, abbreviations. Yeah. Frankie CNC and Woodworking Channel, Sean Martyr, Becca Miller, Steve Misher, Brent Poland, Dale Ludlam. How you doing, Lale? Gary Bray. Dang, I don't know why I couldn't remember that, Gary. There you go. Uh, Sean Draper, uh, David. Well, let's see. How do I say that name? Bosleff. Yeah. I think the H is silent. I think is what he says. Jeff Connor. How you doing? Thank you again, Jeff, for the. Uh, change barbecue he come by uh day four yesterday and we had a nice lunch out of change barbecue uh arnold reigns in the house leo stager david mitchell the one from kentucky <laughs> uh harry vaughn senior how you doing harry troy pritchard richard smedley nathan longfellow how you doing jeff wilder man we got a bunch of folks Looks like 58 viewers so far and still climbing. So thank you all for tuning in. Um, I was just going to kind of do a general Q and A, see what, you know, anybody got anything they want to talk about. Um, we'll try to talk about it. And uh, I haven't, uh, other than a few Gatton CNC kits, I haven't cut anything really on a CNC router in a while, you know, other than, well, other than the wedge templates that I sell, the spacer blocks, and of course the Gatton CNC kit. So I haven't, uh, haven't really cut anything exciting, but I have been playing with that 3D printer a whole lot. And man, I tell you what, I've had that thing just over a week. I got it a week ago yesterday, and I've just been having a ball uh, doing that kind of stuff. So I saw, I think I saw Ron Cleveland out there. I got to give him a big shout out because if it wasn't for him being back on my show back in June, the end of June last year, he's the one that once he talked about 3D printers, it kind of, you know, I kind of thought at that time, okay, yeah, I'm going to get one. And I still, was just kind of waiting around for an excuse to get one, you know, something I needed one for. And uh, I do have some stuff that I'm going to uh, 
design and print. And by the way, folks, uh, any of you who go to the uh, DaveGatton.com website, I put a link down in the show description, but I have created a 3D printing page where I'm going to be kind of, uh, eh, just kind of rambling on talking about my little adventure since it's something new for me. Uh, I'll post pictures of uh, stuff I do, and if anybody wants the files, I can post them up there and share those as well. Um, but I've got some, <clears throat> excuse me, i got some things uh, I'm going to design and do, but right now I'm just trying to make sure I know what I'm doing. And I have to say, uh, and if anybody's got any questions, you can stop me and we'll quit talking 3D printer stuff. Uh, Ron, but okay, they're already saying, what have you made on the 3D print? Well, I just pulled this off. Uh, just pulled this off the bed about, I don't know, an hour and a half ago. And this, these things are cool. This, this is a, actually it's what I would call a mechanical iris, but I think the, the file is called an eyeball or something. But it opens up. And mine's still sticking a little bit. I haven't kind of got it worked in just yet. Sometimes it works good and sometimes it's still snagging a little bit. But the way this thing prints now, for you people who, you know, try to wrap your head around this, if I open this up and set it down flat, that's how it prints. You know, it doesn't print in pieces and you put it together. It prints just like that. And then you get it. And there's some tabs on the bottom and you take a little exacto knife or something and kind of cut those tabs free and the author that did this and i should have got the his name and i didn't but it's on thing of ours uh you know he also said if you take a little screwdriver and stick it around the bottom of this base and kind of go around and pry it loose you'll hear it kind of snap and pop a little bit to get it loose but I, you know, this this kind of stuff just amazes me because I'm a newbie. I don't even know what I'm doing. And I took this file, ran it through uh, Ultimaker Cura, the, the free slicer program, and it works. You know, so I was just, just amazed that, that but I, I, I got to say, uh, I don't want to take credit for all of a sudden being real good at 3D printing. <laughs> In fact, I'm gonna take no credit. I have to give the credit to the machine that I bought. I, I have a uh, Creality CR10. Um, I have links down below if anybody's interested. There's some good deals still going on at banggood.com and at gearbest.com. Uh, you know, check, see who's got the best price. Also, if you're in the US, uh, or even Canada, make sure you know where it's coming from. Because, you know, when I got, I bought mine from banggood.com uh, using a lake that Ronald Walters had. And it came from the New Jersey warehouse. So I ordered on Monday afternoon about two o'clock, and I had it Friday by lunchtime. Uh, but yeah, that, that CR10, in fact, from what I've watched on YouTube, all the reviews of pretty much the Creality products, the, the the Mini, the Ender 3, which I guess is fairly new, um, the CR10, the CR10S, and then they have some other, the CR10S is basically the same size as mine. It's 300 by 300 by 400, but they do make some that have bigger tables. They're like a they're like a 10 S 400 and I think it's 400 by 400 by 500 and then they have one that's I think a CR S I mean a CR 10 S 500 and it's 500 by 500 by five or 600 something like that so there's said there's several different ones but every time I watch somebody doing a YouTube video with one of the Creality machines there's they always have good things to say. The prints they show are fantastic. Um, 
Ronald Walters, you've heard me mention him before. He he uh, he just uploaded a video. I believe it was this morning, or maybe it was yesterday. I think it was this morning, and he made one uh, one of these iris type things. Only the the one he got off the Thingiverse, it ran as separate parts, and then you snapped it together, and then it did the same thing. But I wanted to try the one where, like I said. It runs just like that. You yeah, know, that's so fascinating, that's Dave. The first time I saw something like that on the um, 3D printing uh, was was the uh, a miniature version of a table lift where where, where it has the screw that uh, you turn the screw and and the the uh, table uh, with the uh, with crossbars yeah. the table lifts yeah, and closes. Mean, uh, I went back and watched my old show. It was show number 59. And in mm -hmm. fact, I've got a link to that show on, on my 3D printing page in my website now. And Ron, Ron Cleveland is probably where you saw that because he had one of those that he was showing during that's, the show. That's got to like, be it. it. It was amazing because I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, that's because when you think about it, depending on the timing, you could actually, with a 3D printer, have separate... Uh, print one piece of plastic on another piece of plastic uh and that they uh can break off because of the um for for those who are unfamiliar with 3d printing it's done in layers in slices and it's done specifically where where the uh the layer underneath it is just hot enough where where and it's going at the right pace where it all melds together into one piece well if you give that a chance uh to cool by doing another piece first and then go back to that piece you could theoretically well now in practice create two different pieces such as a screw and the and the um and the nut and a nut uh although you're printing it all Imagine a nut and a screw, and you're printing it from bottom to top, and it's laying sideways, but they're disconnected. And I found that completely fascinating feature of of three D printers. Yeah, it's uh, this, and like I said, this thing. If I could, maybe I can hold it up closer, so let me hold it way back here. Maybe you can get an idea. I mean, it's pretty decent. You know, of course, I don't. I don't really know what super good print quality is, unless this is it. But I mean, I'm not doing anything. I I have changed my settings though. I, I got some settings from a guy on YouTube. He he talked about his slicer settings for Cura, so I kind of copied his settings, and I was getting stuff to work pretty good. But then I accidentally ran something else that was already G code. In fact, it was this uh, the silly little cat thing that. I didn't have the STL. All I had was the. Um, I don't know if I can get that where everybody can see it. Yeah, that light's probably reflecting on. But anyway, this was just the G code that came on the little STL car, and I noticed when I ran it that it had uh, a, a lower bed temperature because I was running like sixty degrees and it had forty, and. It, this thing ran perfect, so I thought, well, let me start running it a little lower. Maybe it doesn't have to be. And a couple other things I've done is I ran this gear, and this thing, I mean, it's functional. It would work for what I wanted, wanted to do, but it's not the prettiest thing. It's It's got a little bit of layer separation on the top. And on the bottom, it's in spots, it's kind of blotchy looking because it's where the Aquanet hairspray <laughs> was, <laughs> where it had built up from me doing all these different uh, prints. So after I pulled this one, in fact, I couldn't even pull this one off. It was stuck on there so good. I took the plate bed off, stuck it in the freezer for about five minutes and came back and then it popped right off. But when I saw it, this bottom finish, I'm thinking, well, that would have been really smooth if I hadn't had that stupid residue from the hairspray on there. So I spent about 
a half an hour cleaning it off and got it back down to the bare glass. And then I ran this one. And again, this is the top layer. I don't know how good you guys can see this, but you can, it's better than the other one, but you can still see the, uh, you know, the layers and, and stuff like that. And I understand there's a, a feature in, in Cure where it is, I don't know, I think it's called smoothing. Ron, help me out. I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I think I want to say smoothing, but it may be something else. But it's basically where when it gets done printing, it will quit quit extruding plastic or PLA and it will just kind of run the tip over and smooth, you know, that's still hot and smooth everything out. Problem is something like this, this big, that would add a tremendous amount of, of time. So, and like I said, I was just playing around, but so you can see a few lines on this side, but this side right here after cleaning that glass off and I don't know if you can get a good shot of that or not, but that is like baby butt smooth. I mean, it's really slick. Dave, have you tried any uh, techniques like uh, either flaming or uh, or taking uh, certain chemicals like acetone or, or whatever appropriate chemical to see if it dissolves the, the very infinitesimally top layer to smooth it out? Uh, I have not tried that, but like I said, I went back and watched that video from June last year when Ron Cleveland was on my show, and he talked about... Uh, you know, if you're going to do that, you need to do it outside. Uh, yeah. So, and I just, in fact, I haven't got any acetone yet. I need to, I don't think I have any, but I need to get some and, and experiment with that. But yeah, I'm just, you know, playing around with, with this kind of stuff. But I, my buddy Jim, uh, Javi, you, you know him, uh, my yep. electrician buddy Jim lives around the corner here. He come by and we went to lunch together. And when we come back, I said, well, come on, I'm going to show you what this, what this thing will do. And he was just impressed at how crisp the edges and everything. I mean, it's, it's almost like you cut it with a CNC or something. I mean, it's, yep. you know, everything is just laid down really sweet. And of course, in case anybody's wondering, they do mesh perfectly. So, but that's about it for me. Uh, as far as what I've done, hopefully, uh, yeah, acetone works with ABS only. So, um, yeah, I haven't even I haven't even bought any uh, ABS. You know, I bought a, three other colored rolls. I bought the black, a silver metal, and a uh, like safety orange type PLA. Um, but I haven't. I haven't even bothered buying anything other than PLA because I figure, I'm, you know, I'm still a new I guess. <laughs> and you know how those rolls are, they'll, they'll last, Ooh, they'll, they'll last a really long time. I was just surprised how, in fact, when my buddy Jim was here today, he's, he's, I had just pulled the, well, the black spool was still sitting on her. I pulled the filament out, but it was still sitting on the thing. And he says, well, how, how long, you know, how much of that have you used? Because he's looking at all this little black stuff that I printed. And I said, well, you see all that stuff? And then I held the roll up. I said, this is all that's off of that roll. I said, it's really hadn't been been that much. So, so a spool will last a long time. But I'm, I tell you, I'm just having the ball. Uh, one thing I kind of hate, and I'm sure everybody else that goes to Thingiverse probably has this, uh, gripe two is uh, it just it's hard to find stuff to me. I mean, they've got categories, but I don't know. It seems like you look in a category and you'll see something, and you go, well, Why is that in this category? So, I don't know. I guess maybe when the people upload them, uh, I, I don't know, but it just seems like they should be more. I, I hear you. It seems I I mean we we were looking through that uh, the other day and uh, and all I did was search for CNC on Thingiverse and there's there's hundreds if not thousands of designs, but many of them are the same thing. Many of them are what I would yeah, I'd hate to say useless because nothing is actually useless, but um, <laughs> some of those come close. And uh, 
And to find really good creative things, it was like one in 50 or one in 100. Uh, so you, you really got to search for it. Yeah. Andrew Hague made a comment in there. He says, yeah, the thing of our search is poor. You know, and, and I guess that's to be expected because they have so much stuff i mean you know everybody says well anything and everything you want is there the hard part's finding it you know and i guess like again it comes down to when somebody d does something and they upload it to share you know depending on what you know maybe they didn't really name it to what it really is or something you know what i'm saying they may call it something different than what you call it, and then you go to search and be a hard time finding it but yep. uh, ron says fyi infused pla is not very strong yeah this these uh these things here that i made ron they're not for really anything more just for display to look cool turning uh all these parts these are two of the gears and all of these parts are ones i had drawn up when i did the if, again, I could keep going back to Ronald Walters, but he he has a video that's probably got a gazillion views, probably two or three million views by now. But it's of a marble machine, a figure eight marble machine. And I wanted to make one of them bad, and he didn't have any plans. He just kind of winged it, did it on the fly. So I spent hours and hours watching that video, stopping it, counting teeth on the gear, kind of guesstimating the size. I still don't know if I have anything the same size as he does, but I, I counted the teeth when I stopped the video. I know that that's how I got it. But there's like, I want to say 15 or 16 gears. And it's just kind of a, a, a Rube Goldberg type thing that runs around and looks cool, but doesn't really do anything. So it's not like there's going to be any big, you know, pressure on these or anything, but uh, I think I think they'll work. Of course, they're really light, but I think they'll work just to uh, as a you know kind of a cool looking display. Have something turning, a bunch of gears. So everybody likes to watch gears turn. Sorry, Dave. Oh. I, I I couldn't resist. Uh, Ray said. Uh, Raymond said. I thought Dave was making a big watch, so I had to call you Flavo Dave. Flavo Dave. Yeah. Instead of Flavo Flav. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I don't know if I'm. Never said the story about my watch, but uh, I quit. I quit wearing a watch right at, right after I turned fifty, which was a while ago. Now, uh, the watch, my watch battery died. And I used to wear a watch all the time, and I thought, well, you know, you get to be fifty. I really don't care what time it is. I'm just happy to still be here. So, yep. I took that watch off, and it's still in the box or in my top drawer or my end table or something wherever i put it and i never did replace the battery and quit i haven't worn a watch since but another thing that would be cool would be to make one of those uh what do you call them the you know the uh well you know people make the wooden clocks yeah, yeah. yeah. those kind of yeah. 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 so I wonder how that would work if you, of course, you probably wouldn't have to make this thick. I made this half inch thick, which is, yeah. when I made the, that I was using half inch thick uh, MDF, I think it was. You know, one thing that I've always wanted to make is, uh, well, uh, two things I wanted to make. One is a clock with a lot of gears and something with a lot of swirling, make, it looks real fancy. But the other thing is uh, I would love to make something uh, where the gears are uh, like planetary gear well not planetary but uh at 90 degree uh uh what are those gears called yeah like hey, transmission well, i'll tell you they have a bunch of them on the uh, on that thingiverse again if you can find the one you're looking for but they have like weird shape gears right. and you know but you have to when you put them together you have to make sure you got it on just the right tooth yeah for it to work but they're yeah. I watch YouTube videos where people make ones out of wood, and I can just sit there and watch them all day long. They're, they're just miter gears. That was it, uh, David. 
Yeah. Um, not so much helical, Sean, but, uh, but yeah, the miter gears, that, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, I wanted to actually do a, try it on the CNC. I mean, well, there's nothing to try. It'll work. It's just, uh, um, it'll take some, uh, worm gears. That's it. Thank you, Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what my, my, I was, I was trying to come up with the, uh, with the worm gear, but uh, miter works also. It, I was, I was, uh, I know they have some programs out there uh, that can produce gears, uh, the templates for gears based on, you know, size, number of teeth, and then et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I haven't seen any out there that can that can do the, the funky kind of gears. I guess I'd have to, well, as long as I, I, I suppose, as long as you have the two-dimensional uh, image, you can extrapolate from that and go... Uh, through the 40 with the 45 degree yeah i i see ron cleveland says i'm sorry dave i'll have to take responsibility for sending me down the 3d rabbit hole i am absolutely holding you personally responsible <laughs> because, because uh i tell you what i i get it now i get it i when i started thinking you know like a week or so ago when I said, all right, I, it's time for me to get a 3D printer. I, I want to get one. I want to learn what all the fuss is about. And that's when I really started watching hours and hours and hours of YouTube videos, different reviews. You know, I would look, you know, I would just put in CD printer reviews and then whatever popped up, I would try to pick the newest one so that I'd be looking at the, you know, I didn't want to look at one that 10 years old or five years old or something. So I started watching all these different reviews and I noticed that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, Ron, but it looks like people that are 3D print folks are a lot like, well, I, would, I, I, I compare them to the cigar box guitar people. There's people that they always say when you build a cigar box guitar, you won't ever build just one because they're so much fun to build and play. You'll rebuild a bunch of them. Well, it looks like unless you're a brand new new and you've only you know you've just got your first three D printer, it's probably not going to be long before you have more than one. Because I all those guys I watched, you know, even when they're shooting their videos, they've got like the whole wall around behind them within the camera shot. And they're they're all running, you know. They got a bunch of different ones, and they're running. And like I said, I've only been running this a week now, but I can see how it would be really handy to have multiple machines, simply because the, you know, it takes a long time to print something with some yep. size to it. Yep. So, I it probably won't be very long before I'll have. Uh, another one or two well, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a bad idea to actually you could actually design a i'm sure they have them out there a multiple head machine although i don't know if that would be practical or not well yeah I, they do have those i've seen those but uh you know if you're making multiple parts but i'm saying i'm thinking like if you want to design something a, a little assembly and it's say four different parts make up that assembly oh yeah mm -hmm. you know you know if, if it takes two hours to to run one or say the parts are similar enough it takes two hours to run each one well now you've got eight hours just to run those four parts but if you got four machines and you're running it all at the same time now you've just got all four parts in two hours Thomas is uh, asking how much money you have in the uh, in the printer so far. The printer I bought, and like I said, there's links down below, and I checked when I put them on there. The I bought mine from Banggood.com. There's a link there for the CR10, and if you click on it, follow it over there. It is three, and it has a uh, European and U.S. So make sure you're on the U.S. price. It's three seventy nine ninety nine, and like I said, I ordered it on Monday. When I got on there and looked, it said that they had 
I forget how many, but they had so many in their U.S. warehouse and said it would ship from New Jersey. So I thought, I'm getting it. That's, you know, I've watched the reviews. Ron Walter sold me on it, so I'm, I'm getting that one. So I got three, basically 380 bucks, and then the shipping was FedEx, and I think it was $21. So I have $401. Uh, total in the thing. Well, not counting the other filament stuff I bought, but the filament's cheap. Uh, I forget who it was. Uh, oh, it was Andrew Hay uh, that posted a link about the filament. And uh, Andrew, you're on there watching. I know where you were. Uh, that's who I'm buying from. That uh, Solutech, three D Solutech, because um, they have. I mean, they got just about every color in the rainbow, looks like. So, Ron says he has one coming, which will be number six. Well, I remember during a, a few months ago, almost a year ago now, when you were on the show, I think you just had those two. Uh, so, yeah, he's he's spread out and got six. We'll, we'll have six of them now. Totally wood workshop, Jim Sinecola, price of the CNC spindle. Yeah. I mean, you know, we talk about, a, uh, you know, we joke about calling it a rabbit hole. But, I mean, I guess it could be super expensive if you go all out and buy the really, really nice ones. But, you know, the there's a lot of decent printers, and I know this because of the reviews I've watched, that, you know, are under $500 now. So it's a lot easier to get into this than say CNC router, I guess. Uh, you know, you spend, you get $500 on CNC router, you probably don't get much. But like I said, I, I basically got 400 bucks into this first, I'm gonna call it my first machine because I'm sure it's not gonna be my last. Um, and it's, it's just, I love the thing, I really do. I have seen some folks, uh, again, just to give you, uh, if anybody's interested in these things, uh, the CR-10, the reason I went with that one is because it was a little bit cheap, well, a little bit cheaper, probably a hundred bucks or so, cheaper than the CR-10S. And some of the differences, I don't know all of them, but, but some of the difference, and I think probably the biggest one is the, the S has dual lead screws for the Z axis. The one I have, the CR10, only has the single lead screw. And I have seen some people talk about how uh, you get, you know, in fact, they even make a, a, an upgrade kit where you can buy this lead screw and another little step where it kind of convert a CR10 into basically a, a 10S. But I don't know. I think just my experience from selling CNCs and stuff, I think some people, when they complain about something, well, this doesn't work right, they really haven't taken the time to set it up right because I have got mine jammed up. You just, it does, it's a little finicky because you've got the lead screw on one side, and you know, like I said, I'm talking about the, the Z-axis, that bar that raises up. So, and on the other end, it's kind of cantilevered out and it's just got a bracket with three rollers. And then it's got an eccentric nut on one and that's how you, you know, but if you get it too tight, when it goes to, when it goes to raise up, that side will drag and then pop up. So you can't get it too tight or if it's too loose, it's floppy. So you have to get it adjusted correctly. And I just took the time to do, get it, Adjusted right. I, you know, take my calipers and measure from the bar to the the bed after I've leveled the bed, and I'm not having any issues at all as far as uh, that. I mean, this, and of course, it would show up more the wider part. This part here, you know, a, a 300 by 300 bed on that thing, 300 millimeters is 
just under 12 inches. Well, this thing is pretty close. There was, this is probably about 10 inches, I think. Yeah, it's exactly 10 inches diameter. So, you know, if I was having any problems with that thing getting out of whack, it would have surely shown up on this one pretty good, I would think. Um, David, David was saying, uh, uh, Dave Mitchell was saying he put glow in the dark butterflies, you know, with the uh, glow in the dark plastic in a tree to freak out the neighbors. Now, was that the Kentucky Dave Mitchell or the Washington Dave Mitchell? I don't know. <laughs> I think didn't, it might be the Kentucky. Didn't right? know there were two. And uh, and the wood bucket gave you the question: What happened to the Go CNC machine? Oh gosh. <laughs> it's uh, well. Let me give let me give you all an update. I you know, I probably in hindsight, I wished I had never uploaded that unboxing video but i thought things were going to proceed a lot quicker uh and i'm pretty much ready to go but the I, I think i mentioned last week it's all assembled i've even jogged it around i've even loaded one of their programs that you can get from uh their website and so i dry run the program i'm still missing that front plate uh I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for it to come. It was, it's been about two weeks ago since I first mentioned to him or told the guy I've been talking with. Hold on. Sorry about that, folks. I just heard Rocky tear into uh, to Jack. Jack. <laughs> If normally, like if I was out in my shop where I can't hear him at all, I would have Jack in the crate just for his own protection. He's, he, you know, he's a year and a half old. He's still a big old 90 pound puppy. And he likes to get all up in Rocky's face and Rocky's old and set in his ways and he don't want none of it. So <laughs> he, uh, he had to set Jack straight, apparently. I don't know if y'all heard that or not, but it sound, sounded like a, a, a Mike Vick party going on in there. <laughs> Anybody get that reference? <laughs> uh, anyhow, uh, yeah, what was I talking about? I got sidetracked. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We were talking on the CNC router, or the, uh, the router, the Go CNC. Oh, the Go CNC. Okay, so... So, like I said, I've been waiting and waiting, you know, thinking, well, what, you know, and the guy, they, they don't, you know, they don't send me an email and say, we've shipped it, it's coming, DHL, here's the tracking number. They just say, well, we shipped it. So, I don't know how it's coming. Uh, the, the main box, when I got it, uh, they said they shipped DHL, and, and I could tell from some of the stickers on the box it shipped DHL, but then it got swapped over, and the mailman actually delivered it. So I don't know how it's coming, but anyway, I thought, well, let me email him again. It's been like a week and a half, and when he said, I'll send it to you immediately, and so I emailed the guy, and I said, I'm ready to go. I got it running. I just, you know, I don't want to shoot any more video. I've, I've got a bunch more video, assembly video and stuff to edit, but I'm not going to do anything more. So, I'm, you know, I need that front plate. And if you want me to do project videos, I need some kind of spindle or something. So anyway, he emailed me back a couple of days ago, I guess it was now, and said that they had shipped it yesterday, which was so I think they shipped it like Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, I think it was Wednesday. So I don't know. You know, when it gets here, I'll put it on, and then I'll proceed with at least one more video. And you know, they—they're. They're, I think they're trying to decide what kind of spindle router type thing to send me because if you look on their website they have two of them they have a proxon and a cress uh k-r-e-s-s -S. and 
I think the issue with both of those, they'll both fit in the 43 millimeter holder that I have on that machine. But I think the issue is everything in Germany, I believe, is 230 volts. So they're trying to figure out if they're going to get a spindle or something from somewhere else. Or I think what they're going to end up doing, because this, this guy sent me a link of some kind of a converter box. So I think they're going to just send me one of those two that they use on the machines over there. And then I'll have some kind of box that plugs into 110 and converts it to 230 or something. So I don't know. I'll just wait and see what shows up when it gets here. Uh, like I said, it's it's going to be a great little machine. I cannot wait to actually run it and cut something. Uh, but, you know, I can't. I can't make them send me stuff. You know, it was unfortunate that 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 piece was missing. And again, there was a rip in the box where somebody added some packing tape. So I don't know whether it was left out of the box or it got ripped, and maybe that part fell out. And somebody take. I don't. Know. If I had to guess, I would say it was left out though, because that part is so long. I'm sure if they would shipped it, they would have put it with the the two, the front and the back because it's basically the same size piece and they had those kind of that stretch wrap stuff wrapped around it i'm sure they would have done that so i'm guessing that it was just left out but i don't know only they know whether they put it in there or not so that's a long-winded answer but that's where i'm at with the go cnc Patrick says, Dave, you have a CNC. Couldn't you just make the missing part? Yeah, I do, but I'm not going to spend the time to reverse engineer. You know, I don't even have a part to measure, so I'd be measuring where it goes, and I'm not going to do that. Well, and the uh, other thing is it's also it's also a, a plate for the front that's that come, supposed to come with the machine, so you'd be filming stuff with your own. Yeah, where, where the primary piece is, uh, the pr primary front place is, is your own design rather than theirs. Yeah, it's it's basically the the front plate. What what you see now has two pretty good sized holes on each side, and one of them, the one on the right, is for the power switch, and the other one on the left is for the e stop. But those holes are oversized just clearance holes through that because that piece is like well I, i'd say quarter plate but you know metric is probably you know what would that be uh 12 millimeters no not quarter three, inch six six point three five six, six millimeters five. so uh but the the piece i'm missing is a plate and i don't even know what thickness it is i'm assuming it, it I'm assuming it's going to be two or three millimeters thick and it has the correct size hole to put the to mount the e-stop on the left the power switch on the right and then it just bolts to the front and kind of covers up the all the wires and stuff uh right now like i said i can still run the machine uh i probably should have brought it out here and i could show you where it's at but I'd really just would rather wait till I get it all complete. But right now, I've just got the wires running through that hole. And fortunately, the switches, uh, you know, the wires aren't soldered to them. It's it's on with the, the little connector things. So when that plate comes in, I just have to, I can, you know, pull the wires off each switch, you know, run them through the, the plate and then mount the switch to the plate and then bolt the plate on the front. So. But, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, it was earlier this week. I think it was Wednesday. I think it was Thursday when he said we shipped it yesterday, which would have been Wednesday. And I don't know how. I don't have any idea how they shipped it, you know, or anything. So it might, it might still be several days before I get it. Yeah, Jeff Connor wants to know, Javi, where did you get your water-cooled spindle flow meter? He saw the one that... Yep, 
you gave I, uh, that I had not yet put on. <laughs> it's still yeah. sitting over there with a clear tune. Yeah, I um I actually got it. It's a kind of a funny story because uh I got it uh on Amazon. I ordered it from Amazon and uh the they sent me I ordered one and apparently through some clerical error they sent me one box. Well, the box didn't have that many, you know, just half a dozen or so. So I had a couple extra. And I uh, I gave one to Larry Duggar, I gave one to yourself. I I I, th I think I still have one more, so Jeff, let me know and and I'll and I'll send it to you. And uh I called I called back and said, what do you want me to do with these extra, with these five extra things? Do you want me to send them back to you? He goes, no, 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 just keep them. It costs us more in shipping than it costs to make the part. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, a Amazon is, uh, is where I got these and it's difficult to find because, uh, these hoses, uh, uh, the ones that come from, from China are six millimeter hoses. Yep. This is, this is what he's talking about. There you go. And uh, I had to get a quarter inch fitting um, mounted on a six millimeter hose, which the pla it's a plastic hose. And well, yeah, you could torch the hose and, and all that. But what I did was instead I got a, uh, a brass uh, fitting because the uh, plastic. Here's the issue on the top of the spindle. Those fittings are specifically for six millimeter. They do not fit a an American quarter inch hose, which I would prefer to use all the way around. So I had to make a little adapter. I have maybe one inch of of Chinese hose, we'll say, on top of the spindle, and from there it's a um, a barbed uh, male to male barb going to uh, and then going straight to the uh, clear hose that like Dave was was showing. And uh, from there, it's all quarter inch, and that works out very well for me. But it's it's a pain because they do not sell, at least here, I haven't found for for any reasonable price six millimeter flow meters that fit with into those things. And frankly, well, they do, but they're but they're uh, uh, they're brass and they're and they're high end. They're hard to find and they're very expensive. So yeah, we got some folks in the chat saying that maybe Dave could three D print them. So maybe I'll be designing a flow meter. Absolutely. I mean, I do have some. Uh, in fact, uh, I saw it on uh, Amazon today. That same company, three D Solid Tech, that sells the filament. They have some stuff that's. They call it clear. I don't know how clear it would would do, but. Uh, I'll have to try to get some. Yeah, that's that's about the only problem, the clear part. And of course, it doesn't have to be very thick because there's not really any pressure under that. You know, it's no. just. A but it's just it has to be. But uh, the other, the other concern I'd have with the, uh, is the slightest little crack in the, um, in the design, and uh, aside from losing the integrity, you'd have a leak. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, McMaster car has a has a has a flow meter. I I check those out as well. I mean, these cost me uh, ten bucks, so you can't knock it for yeah. uh, for one, <laughs> let alone six. <laughs> uh, Alan Gilbert, I'm not sure who that is. I don't know if I've ever met Alan or seen him on here before, but he asks, "Did you look at air cooled spindles before you bought the water cooled one?" I did not. I did not want an air cooled one. I wanted I wanted water cooled. Yeah, I I did look at them. Uh, I did look into them. Uh, Peter Pasuelo swears by his air cooled spindle. He love he spindle. He loves it. And uh, one thing that that I that I will say about it, in all fairness to air cooled spindles, is that it's while it is a little louder because there's a fan involved, it's not that much louder. And the uh, what I my biggest worry was that all the uh, electronics inside would be that's that's the main reason I got a spindle is because uh, I didn't want any of that dust. I burned out a spindle, uh, a router of mine because of the fine dust and uh, hitting the armature. 
I didn't want that to happen. And I didn't realize that the air cooled spindles also are completely enclosed within. So, uh, uh, so no dust will get into those parts and you could just blow it out of the, of the chamber inside, but the water cooled, uh, the dampening of the, of the, the dampening ability of the, of the water cooled spindle. And the fact that I have, and Dave also, uh, when his, uh, when his was clogged, we both of us have run it. One time I've had the motor off and I, and I didn't realize it wasn't even moving. Dave had his pump clogged for a while and it wasn't moving. And, uh, just because the amount of water to dissipate the heat and it really doesn't get that hot. I imagine if you run it for, uh, you know, 30 hours straight, it would probably reach a certain level, but it doesn't take much of a flow to cool that off. Yeah, mine has never, and like I said, I still have not installed that flow meter, but I, I just come up here and feel mine, and, it, it, and it's never, even when I've run it all day long, been more than just barely slightly warm. I mean, I can't even describe it. It's just, you know, and it's warm really because it's hot out here. It's, uh, but it's, it doesn't get hot at all. So, but I, I do sometimes, I'm not real good about it, but sometimes I'll go over there and pull the lid off, pull my hose out just far enough to see if it's got a flow, if it's dripping. I didn't even do that last few days I've got, but. I do reach up and feel it, and it never. I think it would take a lot, you know, as long as there's water sitting in it, even if it's not moving around, it's going right. to help pull that heat away. So, yeah. Plus, I have mine on a, uh, you know, I've got this, this is 3 8 aluminum plate, and I've got this aluminum mount, so that acts as a heat sink too. Steve's uh, Steve's spindle gets only to 89 degrees after a six-hour run. Is that air or, or water cooled? I've had I've had uh, my water cooled run running for the longest job I've had. I believe was 55 hours, uh, and uh, and I've had it running. Uh, it was running for 30 hours straight, and then then I had to switch bits. But uh, after a 30-hour run, the tank was warm. But we're talking eighty degrees, maybe. I, I would guess it wasn't. It wasn't really. It wasn't hot, hot. Not even hot tub water, hot. So, yeah, Steve's was water cooled. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's uh, I've and I've seen people. Uh, I think it was was it Jerry Brown or was it Michael Chipser who put a Jerry Brown? I think it was. He put a cooling fan on, on his, or somebody did. I'm yeah, trying to Jerry's got, uh, I haven't seen him out there in the chat, so he may not be watching, but he's got uh, like a closed system. You know, he's got like a little fan that acts like a radiator. Who's blowing up my phone here? I forgot to silence this thing. Uh, yeah, he's got like a little fan that acts as a radiator, and it's all, you know, he's got it all mounted right there on this Z box and stuff, too. It looks really busy up there. So. Yeah, um, that's, uh, I, I mean, I, I thought it was cool and I wanted to do that until I've run mine for so long and it hasn't even gotten hot. And then I'm, I'm, I'm fighting with the coolness factor of having uh, my, my CNC run at, uh, you know, 60 or 70 degrees. And, uh, and and just having a really cool looking radiator and the practicality factor that I really don't need one. No. Well, I tell you, they've been pretty quiet over there in the chat as far as questions. I haven't really had a... Oh, it's, uh, Rob was saying the bank could have, have good flow meters with temperature gauges. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. That's... Uh, yeah, I have to check that out. Yeah, I'd love to. It's like it's all those, you know. I, I um, every once in a while, just because I can do so. I mean, I I sometimes I criticize people that do things just because they can do it doesn't mean they should do it. You've said it. 
I I've said it. And, uh, occasionally I'm that person. Like I would think, boy, wouldn't it be cool to have a digital display of the temperature of the water on my C and C and the other, my, my other personality is going, what the heck for, <laughs> you know, but it'd be cool, but no, it's useless, but it'd be cool. Yeah. Steve, uh, Steve Mischer sounds like he has a setup very similar to Jerry's. He says, has a radiator with a fan and the pump holds less than 14 ounces of coolant. So that sounds kind of like what Jerry's got because his is all, you know, it doesn't have anywhere to go. It's, it's all right there on, mounted on top of his Z box and everything. Now, Todd brings up a great point. He thinks water-cooled spindles can run a little slower. I've talked to Peter about that, and he says he can run his slow, and it and it doesn't get hot. Uh, but I, I would I would be prone to thinking the same thing. If you're running it uh, for a long time really slow, um, uh, a water-cooled spindle, I mean, because a, a water-cooled spindle is always cooling, whereas an air-cooled spindle... Um, there's a flow of air around it. But on the other hand, according to what I've uh, gleamed from Peter, uh, most of the heat is just dissipated within the case. It's, it's like a big heat sink. It doesn't really uh, have much airflow to begin with, and it doesn't need much. So that's, uh, so it's interesting uh, when you think about it. Yeah. The, uh, I see a couple of people over there talking about the, uh, Nudie 2081, whoever that is, says, have you ever worked with the Syncroy Acorn CNC kit? No, I have not. And when Bill Griggs posted something about that, uh, you know, anything Bill Griggs posts and shares a link on, I'll take a look at it to see what it is. But I, re if I, as I recall, the, it uses uh, kind of a proprietary software. And that's kind of what turned me off about it is, you know, because I already got Mach 3 on all my stuff and or UCC and C, one of those two you can run interchangeably. Uh, but, uh, Sean, don't go to Twitch because you won't find <laughs> I was just about to tell him, don't go to Twitch. You won't find me on Twitch. I haven't been there since uh, show six. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm on YouTube. The official, for those of you going to my channel at 9.30, I'm officially there 10 minutes after this show ends. So that's the official time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I noticed somebody said something about we didn't have very many uh, thumbs up. Where did I see that? Yeah, somebody said, mine in. <laughs> where did I see that? Uh, where I saw it now. Wasn't that far? Oh, yeah. Sean Draper says, Come on, guys. 92 watching and only 27 thumbs up. Well, I don't have it where I can see the, the thumbs up. I guess I can scroll Same it here. Up. I just have the pop out. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, I guess we're not going to get any. Th oh, we got 40 now. Okay. I was going to say, if we're not going to get any thumbs up, we'll just. Forget about the giveaway, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so we got 93 watching right now. There should be. Well, it doesn't have to happen every week, Dave. Should uh, should be uh, some more thumbs up, more than 40 anyway. <laughs> uh, I mean, where else can you go where you see a weekly giveaway? Come on. Uh, speaking of that, you know, like I said, this is uh, this will be our seventh Gatton CNC kit that's been given away. We, we gave away four of them in April. Uh, we've given away two of them so far in May. This, this will be the third one in May, so that's seven. And we'll probably give one away next week. So that'll be eight. And that's just the ones I've given away on the show. I've given away several others to different folks for whatever reason so uh you never know when i'm, when I'm gonna just pull the plug on that <laughs> so yep you know. contractually if you win it you gotta build it if you don't 
There won't be any more to yeah. go around. And I've and I've mentioned this before. I probably haven't mentioned it lately. And so far, I think everybody is. But I hope it is my hope that the people that enter this giveaway or this random drawing is somebody that really wants one of these things and wants you know wants to build it, wants to get into CNC. Uh, you know, because that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm giving away. I, I'm not just trying to give away free stuff. Uh, you know, and then somebody get it, and then they go, okay, well, I don't want to build this. I just, you know, I, I want somebody who really wants one to uh, to enter and try to win one. And I hope that's that's what it is. Uh, I quit, you know, I quit posting. The, I think that first week I posted on Facebook, like, I don't know, the Thursday or Friday before that we had this many entries and still pretty good odds. And then everybody went crazy. And that first week, I think I had 150 something entries. But I quit talking about that on Facebook because I don't want people to go, oh, there's a giveaway. Let me just fill out a thing and get, and they don't even know what it is or they don't really want one. They, you know how people are. They just hear the word free and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm in. I want to win it. So uh, I think, you know, I, I have, I think we've got 42 entries tonight, which, you know, we're always around high 30s, low 40s, seems like these past weeks. Uh, so hopefully it's, it's somebody who really would like to win one. And uh, we'll build it when they win. But I think we're, uh, what are we, at the top of the hour yet? Nine oh, five. yeah, I just passed it already. Well, I guess we're going to do a giveaway. I probably need to do it, huh? They were Let just me. asking. They were uh, Sean. Sean was asking because he wants to paint his new Gatton safety. Uh, I mean orange, and he asked which orange it is, and I told him safety orange. That's correct, is it not? Well, the, yeah. There's probably a a Sherwin Slice. Williams spec. You know, I or I don't know the. I've had I've had two different companies. Uh, you know, sometimes if I use the company that's local right here in town. They don't do powder coating, so when I when they call me and say your parts are ready, I have to take the truck over. They take a forklift, set the pile of parts on the truck, and I take it straight to the powder coaters in Oxford. Uh, mm. And actually, and then if I don't use them, and I use the other company in uh, Morrow, they do powder coating in house. But when I gave the, when I get started having them do them, I gave the powder coat spec that I got from the powder coating company. So no matter who makes, whether the powder coating place coats them or I get them from the other fab shop that does it in half, you can't tell the difference. Right, but is the I, color... I, well, I, I, I say that you can't, you can't tell the difference in the color. It's the same color. But... I will say the company that does only powder coating, they do a better job of powder coating because that's gotcha. all they do. They well, put it on the, thicker. Is it, is it is the color actually called, uh, is it safety orange or is it another orange? No, it's called a, a safety orange. Okay. Which for those of you uh, that are printing, uh, it is 59.6% magenta and 100% orange. That's safety orange. Zero black, zero. Uh, yeah. Now silence. I've got a, uh, a spool of the, 3D Solutech, whatever their orange is. I haven't even brought it out here. I haven't even opened it. I haven't even broke the seal on that one. Uh, but I'm anxious to see how close it would match this. Of course, when I look at this right here, it looks different than when I look right here because the camera doesn't makes it look lighter to me than what it, than what it really is in my hand. But yeah, it's called Safety Orange, and it's got, like I said, probably a Sherwin Williams or whatever spec, whatever paint company they're using. So, all right, well, if we're going to do a giveaway real quick here before we get out of here, uh, I got the chat messed up. Please enter me for the giveaway. Yep. I answered. Uh, yeah, Garrett, uh, each week uh, up to about a day before or a few hours before, 
they will take entries, but uh, their entries are closed for this week, so enter for next week uh, or for the next drawing. And uh, on DaveGatton.com, you'll see the links there. Yeah, and some people, you know, I don't know how, whether they're trying to figure out what random number is going to be drawn. I don't know how they would take a guess at that because it's, you know, it's all random. But uh, some people wait till I had some right about seven o'clock tonight. And I'm like, well, okay, I hadn't set the computer up yet, so I'll throw them in. But we've got 42 entries. Uh, and whoever that was, uh, seeing uh, that was Garrett. Yeah, Garrett, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, I don't feel bad if people wait to the last minute and they, and they don't get in because you've had all week. You know, <laughs> you can, in fact, you can enter right, go to the website and enter right now and you'll be in the one I'm going to do next Saturday, if I do, which I think I probably will. All right, let me get my, man, my phone, y'all, somebody's blowing my phone up here. Messages. That, that would be me. I'll talk to you about that after, Dave. <laughs> uh, let me uh, get my handy dandy timer going here. Oh, I love it. When I pull it up, it's right there. So you'll have a minute and 30 seconds, 90 seconds once I call out the name. I'll start this. And if you're watching this for the first time, the thing that the, the the whole deal is you have to be watching live in order to claim it. So if I call out your name and you're sitting on the sofa watching American Idol or something, I don't know what I don't even know what's on. I don't watch TV. Uh, you know, you'll miss out. So, but you got to got to be watching live and you have to comment in the chat. That's how you respond. You comment in the chat within that thing before my phone goes off. Todd Link says NASCAR. Yes, yeah, they're running Charlotte tonight, I think. The, I think that's where they're at, isn't it? Charlotte? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not much of a NASCAR fan anymore since they keep changing the rules every other day. Let me know when you need the drum roll, Dave. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's see. Let me get, get going here. Drop this down. I've got... Uh, yeah, 42 names. So let me go open up my random.org thing. It should pop right up because I use it so much now. This laptop right here, it never gets turned on except to do this show. About the only thing I use it for. Okay, so we're going to do one to 42. Is everybody ready? Yep. The first, the first random number is number forty. Number forty. Oh, let me go over here to my little spreadsheet to see who number forty is. Number forty is Joseph Poindexter. Joseph a point extra. So if you're watching, make sure you reply in the uh, chat and let me know you're here. Does a point extra. Yep, here you there he is. Okay, I see it's that yeah, saying me, me. Yep, that's yep. Joseph Poindexter. Yep, okay, Joseph, you made it with lots of time to spare. So congratulations. You will be getting your kit probably sometime towards the end of next week. I usually ship them out. Uh, well, I can't remember where you, where you live, Joe. Joseph? Let me look and see. Delaware, Ohio. Yeah, if I ship it uh, by Wednesday, you probably have it Friday. Delaware, Ohio? Delaware, Ohio. That's Delaware. closer than Ohio, Delaware. 
Yeah, yeah. I don't know why they make the name of city in that state, but that's what it says, Delaware, Ohio. So congratulations, Joseph Poindexter. Uh, you're the lucky winner. I hope uh, I hope you'll let us know how your build is. Um, something else I probably ought to talk about a little bit before I get out of here. Nobody's mentioned it or asked me about it. But I changed the, uh, the Facebook groups from, you know, I had them just like in, what's what's the thing open or i forget yeah public they, yeah public so they were they were public where anybody could well i mean they still had to get approval to to join you know to get to become a member of that group but with it being public anybody can be there and, and comment and pretty much do everything that a member can uh, and just here lately, we, you know, I most of the time people are pretty good, but my my Facebook groups are different than other Facebook groups, and there's a very good reason for that. I have two Facebook groups. One of them is called Gat and CNC, and it is for all things relevant to a Gat and CNC. The other one is Garage Work CNC, and it is for all things relevant to a Garage Work CNC. And like I said, most of the time, everybody behaves themselves and is pretty good. But I've noticed here lately, we get folks that post links, and then they'll say, "Here's here's some stuff, you know, free models or something. Check them out." Well, then when you click on that link, yeah, there may be some free stuff, but it's basically an ad being put in my Facebook group. And I don't play that, you know. It's My groups are specific for whatever, you know, if it's a Gatton CNC Facebook group, it's about Gatton CNC. It's not about a can master or a digital wood carver or any of that other stuff. There's other groups for that. There's a ton of other groups for stuff like that. There's a lot of groups that are just a general CNC group where no matter what you have, you take Bill Griggs uh, CNC router tips, for instance. It doesn't matter whether you have a home built one or it doesn't matter what, you know, you may not even have one. You may just run one at work or something. You know, your company has one or something. And that's, that's not the kind of group I wanted. I wanted a group that's, I'm not worried about big numbers and thousands and thousands of members and stuff. We're still, I can't remember. I think in the gap, I think we're about six or 700 members and about 600 members on the garage works. I think something like that, but I'm not after big numbers or anything like that. Mine's more for people to, you know, post their pictures their projects and stuff like that. But, you know, it's all about the Gatton and the Garage Works, whichever group we're talking about. It's not about any you know, of that stuff. And, I, you know, and I don't have a problem if you don't have a Gatton CNC and you have a, whatever it is, you know, XYZ or whatever, that's fine. But go post that stuff over in the XYZ group or some general CNC group because it's not relevant to what, what we're doing in those groups. So. Anyway, like I said, nobody's really, I haven't seen anybody ask uh, anything about that. Um, but I did that the other day because, like I said, somebody posted something about 3D models. And he said in the post, you know, I'm trying to help you out, get 3D models. And then when I clicked on it, of course, it was a place that sells 3D models. And then when I went and searched that guy's name, he wasn't even a member. So. I'm like, well, I guess it's time to <laughs> to make them a closed group. So it's not it's not private, you know. I think there's I can't remember what the difference is. Private uh, is private is the rest of the world can't see it. The public can't see it. Yeah, the public can see it. They just can't post. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're exactly right. So mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't I didn't see any need, at least not yet, to to make it 
private, but I wanted it to close it up where only the members can, uh, you know, post things and stuff like that. Um, and actually, you know, I, I, I know it's the cool thing to be big on social media. And I know guys that are like in every single Facebook group that they can get a hold of, you know, all kinds of stuff. I'm not like that. I have, in fact, I left a group the other day that I've been in for a long time. Uh, but there's that group has gotten so big. I'm not going to mention the name. Y'all can probably figure it out. But that group has, has gotten so big and everybody's an expert. When, when a newbie would post a question, you know, there'd be somebody just really rag them on it. And, you know, well, that's a dumb question, you know, stuff like it. And I just got so tired of the drama, I finally just said, I'm out. So, uh, and the other thing I don't like is if somebody creates a Facebook group and puts me in it because I'll get out quicker. And, you know, if you want me to, you know, if you get a Facebook group and you want me in it, you can send me a message of some kind and say, hey, come check this out. And if you want to get in, take the join thing or whatever. But don't put me in one because I'll I'll get out right away. I don't I don't have enough time for all that stuff anyway. Uh, and I don't know how those I know people that are you know you look in the groups you click on their thing and it shows how many groups they're in. I'm like, well, there's no way these people could you know they have to not sleep at night to yeah be yeah. active in all these groups. And if you're not and to me, there's no use in being in a group if you're not active. Yeah. You know, if you're not going to at least comment once in a while or try to help somebody out. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to uh, – I've gotten out of a few groups here lately, and I'm probably going to get rid of some more just because I don't really need to be in a bunch of them. And I may start going through the, uh, the member list too and just – you know, I get people – I'm kind of rambling now, I guess. And there's, well, there's still 84 watching. But uh, I get people sometimes that when you when you ask to join my group, no matter which one, the garage works or the gap, there are three questions that I have. And I want people to answer the questions. They're really easy questions to answer. But it's like, do you have, a, like, for example, a GATN, do you have a GATN CNC? Are you interested in GATN CNC? Have you purchased a GATN CNC? So it's basically just to make sure it's not some bot, you know, doing it. But I get some people that'll that'll say, "Yeah, I got a gat in CNC," and I'm like, "No, you don't. I know everybody, everybody that's bought one. I can in two seconds I can do a search, and I know everybody that's, that's ever bought one." So I don't know why people do that. Say they got one unless they've got one under the table somehow, which. They're not going to get in the group that way either. But anyhow, I'm just rambling now. Uh, Sean says, yeah, I need to weed, weed out some of mine. It's, uh, you know, it's a shame because Facebook is, is, is a good way to ask questions and learn a lot and stuff like that. But it just seems like the Facebook groups, when they, the bigger they get, the worse they get. And I don't know. And then some people, I'm not missing no names, but some people get a kick out of, you know, oh, I got this many members now. No matter how many members you got, I'm, I'm happy with my little group because I know what kind of quality of people I've got in there. Uh, there's not anybody that can post a question in there and, and you know, people jump right on and help them. So, uh, I thank y'all for that. I hardly ever have to answer anything now because y'all beat me to it. By the time I see it, there's already five or six other folks helping them usually. So, um, yeah, Joseph was asking about the uh, sorry, I stepped out. Joseph was asking about the, the size that's what you were referring to. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm just saying the bigger our group gets, the more. You know, it's like if, if you've got a group of 
50 and 10% of them are jerks. That means you got five jerks. Yeah. If you got a you got a Facebook group that's got 20,000 people, <laughs> 5% of jerks. That's a whole lot of jerks. <laughs> well, yeah. That's why I'm moving from a big city to a small town. Yeah. <laughs> uh, somebody I saw a question after Josh T says, just curious, Dave, roughly how many kids are out there? All of them. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> there are a few hundred out there. Yeah. Yeah. You don't work for the IRS, do you, Josh? There's a there's a website out there uh, with Gatton and Garage Works uh, CNCs and even Sidewinders listed. Yeah, and um, I think I think I saw was Becca Miller on here earlier. Yeah, Becca's on. I don't know if she's still watching. I want to thank her because you know she just took that by the horns and and does a good job of keeping that up. Uh, but in answer to Josh's question about. Uh, there's Becca. Thank you, Becca. You do a great job uh, adding people to that, keeping them in the machine and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, I will say, though, the only people that are on that map that Becca does such a great job of, uh, you know, posting the people, that's only the people that let her know because. At one point, I had tried to do it on the website, but that list I've got on the website on, on both of them, the Garage Works and the, the Gatton, is way, way behind. And I'm, I figure I'm not even going to bother doing it. If people want on them, some people may not want on the map. They may not want people to, to know where they're at and stuff. And then they, I don't know why, but they might not want one. But uh, yeah, that's. I don't know how many total Becca has on there, uh, but it's it's just some of them. You know, probably will always be that much. So we got some messages held for review. <laughs> oh no, that's just I had a bad word in it, and I don't want them to demonetize you. <laughs> yeah, y'all better behave over there. All right, I guess we're done. Uh, how, how many uh, thumbs up? Did, it wasn't uh, a bad, bad word. It was just a, you know, a one that you could get demonetized for because, well, you know. <laughs> yeah, you don't even want to say shucks anymore. You yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I've done with the uh, other thing. I was going to see how many. Oh, I might have closed that out. I guess I did. Um, yeah, I was going to see how many thumbs up because we had 40 a while ago, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, we still got almost 90 folks watching. So, hopefully, on your way out, you'll hit the thumbs up or like or whatever they call that stupid thing. Uh, I guess it's a thumbs up, isn't it? But, that, but yeah, when you hit it, it says you like that video. Yep, yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, y'all, uh, Murray Cohen in the house. How you doing, Murray? Murray. Um, 66 thumbs up. Okay. Well, that's, y'all can do better. Y'all can do better. Come on. <laughs> y'all can do better. Y'all want me to give away a machine, uh, or, or a gas machine, a gas CNC kit next week. Uh, should have some more. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just rambling on here. I'm going to get off of here and let Avi get going here. We're at about almost 9.30. I know we got started a little bit late. Uh, I got to go in and make sure my dogs ain't kill each other. They've been pretty quiet since I had scolded them. But anyway, we'll get out of here. Uh, everybody have a good weekend. I don't guess it's any kind of holiday. Now we got Memorial Day coming up. Uh, what's that next weekend, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, last weekend was Mother's Day. Hope everybody had a good Mother's Day. Uh, but anyhow, we're going to sign off. Uh, Y'all stick around. Watch uh, Mr. Unsweater. One sweater, however you say it. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, we've got a, for those of you that want to get to my channel, uh, well, let me put the link up, but uh, for the show, but uh, just uh, click on the three dots next to any one of my comments, and you can go to my channel directly. Let me uh, put the link up here. In the meantime, yeah, and, and while he's doing that, one more time, I'll just mention that we'll we'll plan on doing a show and tell. Uh, so you know, last the last month when we did it. Uh, I had quite a few folks in lots of pictures. So, you know, don't go pull, pull it out a picture of something you did like six months ago or something like that. But if you've done something within the past, you know, three or four weeks that we haven't already seen, uh, it's something you're proud of. And again, it can be CNC router. It can be CNC laser. And it can be. 3D printing, see, because that's that's all CNC too. Uh, and I know a lot of folks, just from the questions I've got in the last couple of weeks, a lot of folks have uh, 3D printing. You know, I, I feel like I'm kind of behind as far as everybody else, because I know there's some folks that still don't have them, but uh, I feel like, uh, you know, because I've been thinking about it for almost a year before I finally got one. So, uh, also, I just saw something I forgot what I was going to say. Um, oh, yeah, emailing the, the photos. If you would, you know, I know some people do it different, but if you send me photos in an email, I prefer them in an email. And please, if you send, well, it doesn't matter if you're sending one photo or five photos, that's fine. But please send them as an attachment and not put them in the body of the email because it's a much bigger pain in the butt for me to try to save them out of that email. If you put them as an attachment, I can just grab the whole attachment and drop it and I'm done. So, but yeah, send send the stuff you're, uh, you're wanting to show off. Uh, And we'll we'll do a show and tell next week, and I'll give you a update on the go see and see if there is if there is one, uh, and maybe I'll have some more three D printing stuff to show you. Maybe. Anyway, y'all hang around, watch uh, watch hobby shows coming up uh, just a few minutes as soon as as soon as we get off of here, and everybody have a great weekend. We'll talk to y'all later. Right all.